The United Nations peacekeeping force in Lebanon says two more of its peacekeepers have been injured after Israeli forces fired at its main headquarters at Nakura near Lebanon's southern border. Israel said it was targeting what it described as a threat and acknowledged wounding two people. On Thursday, Israeli tanks hit the same position with tank fire, injuring two other peacekeepers. The incidents come as the Israeli military moves deeper into Lebanon to battle Hezbollah militants. And we can now speak to our correspondent Tanya Kramer, who's been following all of that from Jerusalem. Uh, Tanya, Israeli fire has injured two more UN peacekeepers in the south of Lebanon. The second time this has happened in 48 hours. Have you heard more? Do you have any more details? Well, it means the details that UNIFIL released in a statement. Again, we already had a very lengthy statement uh, on uh, Thursday about the first incidents uh, yesterday. So they said once again that it headquarters in Nakura were affected by the fighting between Israel and Hezbollah. It's the second time, as you said, in 48 hours. This time again, two peacekeepers were injured close to an observation uh, tower. Uh, they were brought uh, to uh, local hospitals and also in a separate incident they have said that an IDF bulldozer hit the perimeter wall near a unifil position near the blue line, that is the demarcation line between Israel and uh, Lebanon. Already on Thursday, uh, UNIFIL had said that two of its peacekeepers were uh, injured when uh, an observation tower there uh, were hit and also other positions were hit uh, by Israeli fire and it had reminded Israel of its obligation uh, to protect uh, the peacekeepers peacekeeping force that is stationed here uh, in uh, that is stationed there in southern Lebanon uh, on the mandate uh, from the UN Security Council. Israel's military says it will conduct a thorough review of this issue. Uh, what's expected from that? Well, this is a more or less a standard procedure and a standard answer uh, that uh, the Israeli military, the uh, IDF, usually releases in such cases. Uh, it said it keeps also the communication open, uh, the channels with uh, UNIFIL, obviously, about whether, you know, it's still to see whether it would change anything in uh, the fighting uh, there on the ground. In that statement that came in the afternoon from the military, they said an initial examination had showed that the IDF fired towards a threat and a hit was identified, which was about uh, 50 uh, kilometers uh, uh, from the source of the threat, and that was apparently near a UNIFIL uh, post. Uh, the IDF spokesperson also released a tweet saying that um, the peacekeeper, peacekeepers were inadvertently uh, hurt. But we also heard here from military uh, sources that said that uh, actually the military here in Israel had asked UNIFIL to redeploy at least temporarily from some of its uh, positions uh, where uh, Israel, uh, the Israeli army is uh, fighting. But we also understand from UNIFIL that they have not done so because that is exactly their mandate uh, to observe uh, what's happening around the blue line, uh, the, the border area there, and also to, of course, record any violations uh, in, in that area. That's DW's Tanya Kramer in Jerusalem. Thank you so much. A short while ago, I spoke about this with Marina Miron. She's a military analyst at King's College London. I asked her what the conflict in Lebanon means for the UN peacekeeping mission in the South. Well, it's a very unfortunate incident. And the problem is that we have now two sides telling conflicting stories. On the one hand, we have the IDF and Israel saying, well, we gave an advance warning to UNIFIL to relocate and to take shelter. And um, UNIFIL didn't do so. Therefore, they conducted their operation. And UNIFIL says that they are upholding the resolution 1701, uh, meaning that they will be staying in their outposts and they're supposed to ensure that there is no conflict in that zone along the blue line where the troops are stationed, um, which runs along the northern border of Israel, southern border of Lebanon. So we have this problem on the one hand that Israel will be criticized by the international community. 
Um, Israel is saying that uh, UNIFIL is not fulfilling its mission, so Israel has to take it into its own hands. But the political ramifications for Israel from this incident, whether it was deliberate, whether it was a mistake, uh, it doesn't matter anymore because there will be political ramifications. And Israel is dependent on external help. It's dependent on help from the United States. And therefore, this incident could potentially affect the degree of help and the degree of pressure that Israel will come um, upon um, when it comes to further operations within Lebanese territory. What about the UN peacekeeping mission itself? How difficult is this, Marina, for that peacekeeping mission in Lebanon to continue? Is it sustainable under these conditions where there's really no peace to keep? Well, the problem is that both parties do not seem to listen to, to UNIFIL, and therefore it is incredibly difficult uh, for this peacekeeping mission to stay in this area because, as I said, Israel uh, alleges that Hezbollah has been operating in the vicinity of the UNIFIL outposts, and UNIFIL didn't do anything to prevent that. Also, under the resolution 1701, it is supposed to do so. And, of course, UNIFIL is supposed to stay in position, whereas Israel wants to conduct its operation. So, essentially, UNIFIL is caught in crossfires, and they have a limited mandate, meaning that they can use lethal force, but it depends on the situation. They, they can use lethal for, force to protect themselves. Now, if they use lethal force against the IDF, then there will be a greater problem created by that. And therefore, I, I, I think in this very situation, either their mandate should be extended and amplified in terms of when they can employ this lethal force and the clarification on their positions and on what they can actually do within their own area should also be re reconsidered by the Security Council. Otherwise, I don't see how they can be effective rather than be creating an obstacle in a way. Marina, thank you very much for your analysis. That was Marina Miron in Munich. Thank you, Terry.